Hello YouTube! Time has come to finally tackle a job that I've been putting off for ages. Removing the Capri's dashboard. Time to get this dashboard off. The reason I've been putting it off for so long is that I've read that it is a pretty nightmare job on the Capri. I've actually seen a few guys with Capris who've had the dash off, and once the dash comes off, it never seems to go back. It seems to remain a mess of wires and stuff in their garage forever, as the car gradually gets covered with more and more cardboard boxes and carpets until it rusts away or has to be sold as a wreck. But there's so many jobs that need doing now, I can't avoid it. A lot of these jobs are pretty common to uh, the Capri. Um, I'll just list them through quickly. The lights behind the dashboard, completely dead now, non-existent at all. I don't even get a tiny glow. So I bought some red LED lights, which I'm gonna try and fit in their place. Um, also the heater, the blower motor, doesn't seem to work whatsoever. I do get heat in the car, but I think that's just radiated from the engine straight through the bulkhead into the car because I have to drive for about five to ten minutes before the cabin heats up and the windscreen clears. So I kind of have to drive with my head hanging out the window like a rabid dog before I get any heat, which of course is pretty dangerous. Um, also the steering, I don't think it's quite centred. I find when I'm driving straight, the steering wheel's slightly pointed to the left. So I need to get the steering wheel off and just straighten that a little bit. And also, as you can see, like with many Capris, my dashboard is fairly cracked. So while it's off, I'm gonna fill some of these cracks myself. Um, I'm not gonna do the world's best job, but this isn't a show car, so I'm just gonna do the best I can to repair some of these cracks there. And while it's off, I'm gonna paint this gray dashboard black, like I have done some of the other interior parts, some of the other interior trim, like the door trims and the center console there. Okay, so the tools I have ready, it's a large piece of cardboard with a pen, which I'm gonna draw a picture of the interior dash and then fix all the screws I take off into. So I've got at least a rough idea of where they came out when I go to put them back. An old Hayden's manual to give me an idea of how to take the thing apart and a screwdriver set to of course remove these screws. I'll probably need more tools as I go forward, but that's a start, time to get on with it. So the first thing the manual says to do is to disconnect the battery earth. Well, I've removed the whole battery, so that's not a problem. And then it says, remove this upper shroud and remove eight screws from the lower panel and remove the lower shroud. I'll do that now. Okay, they came off nice and easy. It said there should be two screws in the lower panel. Mine only had one. Um, so I've removed those two parts and I've started my little drawing Put the first screw in where I've marked the screw came from. The next, it says remove the lower dash trim panel by taking out eight screws. I've noticed my panel's actually in two halves. There's a left half and a right half. And there's, uh, I suspect there's a lot less than eight screws in there. Anyway, let's see what happens when I take it apart. First panel removed, which looks like it was supposed to have seven or eight screws originally. Mine only had one though in the side, and even that wasn't in properly. Um, you have to split the hazard light from behind to get that out, just so you're aware. It's the right hand side done. That's what the switch looks like when it's hanging there. Now I've got an aftermarket stereo in mine, so I'm gonna remove the trim around the outside and then I'm gonna use the tools to pull the stereo out. You can see in my Suzuki Alto video how to do that. Okay, now the left hand panel's off. Came away very easily, probably again due to having a much less some um, cables, the screws than it was supposed to. Um, the only slight difference with mine is at some point I've added a uh, choke cable for the carbs underneath. So I'll probably remove that. Um, normally I'd leave the whole panel just dangling there, but I do want to paint it. So I'm gonna have to unscrew those. My diagram's coming along a little bit as well. I'm nowhere near as many screws in it as it should have, but it's gonna be useful as a reference later on. One point to note, to get this panel off, um, a bit easier, you can remove the little ashtray part. No screws involved, you just kind of pull it and wiggle it and it comes out. So after some jiggling around, I've removed the stereo. 
I've also pulled off the dimmer switch which just pulls straight off. Um, I'm trying to decide now how much to take this apart. To do the heater really I have to take the whole thing to bits. So now that I've got the uh, underbody panels off, the under dash panels off sorry, I'm going to try removing the screws that hold on the instrument cluster and see if that will just pop off. I think though what I'm really going to need to do for ease of access is take off the steering wheel and the glove box as well, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, I've got the instrument panel halfway out now. I've removed three screws from the bottom and the whole thing wobbles quite a bit. A lot of these trim rings have fallen off the dials, which I've stored down there for now. Um, the four switches here, you just grab them from behind, push them forward so they pop out and then undo the plugs off the back. That's quite easy. Um, but there's something at the top seemingly holding it in, which I can't quite figure out. I've read that there are spring clips behind the dash, but I can't find any. So I'll crack on and see where I get to. Okay, with a bit of wiggling, the whole thing's popped out pretty easily. No sign of any spring clip, so they must have gone long ago. Um, the thing that was sticking was this radio box. I've had to bend in a few tabs on the inside and jiggle it about. It was getting stuck behind the dash. So now that that's free, yep, it's loose, I'll be able to pull that out, see where we go from there. Now that the cover's off, and I must say, so far this hasn't been too bad a job. It's all been pretty easy. We can see underneath, we can see the instrument cluster, which is just held in by some screws, which I'm assuming will come out fairly easily. And we can see some of the wiring there behind the heater controls, um, the heater box down here, um, and the back of the fascia panel. Right, this instrument cluster has quite a few different screws in it, um, but according to the Haynes manual, the ones that attach it to the vehicle, there's only four, and on mine they're black. There's one here, there's one up there, there's one down there, and there's one down there. So I'm going to remove those um, and remove the cluster. With those four screws removed, the whole thing's wobbly, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to reach behind now and unplug the cabling that attaches it to the front. Uh, my screw diagram's coming along fairly well, so I can keep track of all these. Um, I must emphasise this is a really useful thing to do. I've learned the hard way by taking bits apart and then having no idea where the screws go to put it back again before. Okay, it's getting fairly dark now, so I may have to stop filming soon. But I've removed the loom plug, which was very easy. You just squeeze in two tabs on the side and pull it back. There's a oil pressure cable, which has a nut on it, so I'm going to try and get a spanner onto that. And then I'll just have to figure out how to remove the speedo cable, and that'll be that. Oil pressure cable's now off. It was just a 14mm nut that you uh, twist around to the normal way and pull it off. And before I lose the light completely, there's the back of the speedo cable, which was the last thing to come off. With a bit of squeezing and wriggling and pulling, it just seemed to pull directly off the back. Best way to do this is to get your hand, sorry, to get your hand up and behind the dash, pull the instrument cluster forward, whilst your other hand, with as much space as you can, grabs it as tightly as you can, wiggle it, squeeze it, and pull it, and it will come off. Now to take this inside, see if I can fit the replacement bulbs. And here it is, the back of the instrument cluster. There's the, there's the front of it. Um, while you're taking it out, you might as well give it a, a clean all over like I've just done. And then the uh, lights I'm going to be replacing, the bulbs, are all within these red bulb holders. We just need pulling off with a bit of wiggling, chucking the old bulb away, putting an LED bulb in its place. Um, I bought some just off eBay. There we go, just a, a fairly cheap model, but it should do the job. I've gone for red ones to try and save my night vision a bit while I'm sitting in the car. Just a quick intermission, do not buy these bulbs. The bulbs you want are capless bulbs. They'll fit much better. Anyway, back to the video. Um, the only negative side effect that might have is that it might make the needles a bit hard to see because as you can see, they're kind of an orange color. Um, so you pick your own color. Most people go for blue, I believe. An interesting thing that I have noticed is that it looks like the wiring panel on the back of this has been on fire at some point. As you can see, it's all melted here, and this bit's completely almost burnt through altogether, which is a bit worrying. 
Um, looking at the manual, this section is labelled as ammeter, so that's the ammeter. Um, I'm just going to cut this dead part out and replace it with a wire. I'm not sure what's caused it, and I don't know how to find out, so I'm just going to tidy it up as best as I can. Hope it doesn't happen again. Something that's different with LED bulbs to the conventional bulbs is, of course, it does matter with LED bulbs which orientation they are. So you'll either need to put them all in at random, connect it up, see which ones work and which ones don't, swap the ones that don't the other way around, which is probably the easiest way, or try and figure out uh, which is positive and which is negative um, for the main wiring loom and follow it around and uh, put the bulbs in accordingly. Something interesting I've noticed is the LED bulbs I've bought off the internet here don't quite fit in the holes under these covers. Uh, that's because there's a plastic sheath around the outside that sticks out a bit. So what I've been doing is just crudely hacking off one of the edges with a hacksaw blade by hand and then I find it fits in the hole. Uh, you can probably find a, a cleverer way of doing it than me or perhaps buy some bulbs that do fit easily. One more thing to mention is that for the illumination bulbs, which not all of these are, um, this is one of them here which I've already removed, there's a plastic cover inside which apparently with age goes hard and becomes less transparent and everyone says you should just remove if you're using coloured LEDs. I wasn't originally going to do this but I think I might give it a go now. To remove this black cover you take out it, except for this one and this one here. Then the cover Shh, Max. We'll just pull off like that. And just when we thought we'd made it, it looks like to remove these uh, lens covers, which uh, you can see on the blue ones just there. Um, and there's others spread around, there's another one. It looks like you have to at least partially remove the clocks. So I'm going to do that next. And after the removal of a couple of seven millimeter nuts and some washers, you can pull the gauges out and you can see the cover there. If you want to look at what the back of the gauges look like, there you go, that's the fuel gauge. Fairly simple piece of apparatus. I'm not going to go through each and every gauge unless they're significantly different from this. But as you can see the covers, you just slightly pull the tabs to one side and pop them out. I've already removed one of them from the other side and as you can see, it's so old and brittle, the thing's just crumbling to pieces anyway. There's another bit of it gone. So no great loss losing these if you've got coloured LEDs anyway. Um, you probably want to go for blue if you want an original look, but as I said, I'm going for red just to be a bit different. Here's an example of another one of those covers that's gone brittle with age and heat. As you can see, it just kind of crumbles apart. So there's no real point keeping these in the car at all. And another very quick tip. When you're pulling these bulb holders out, it can be easy for the bulbs to drop out into the main body of the clocks as well. So either do this before you put the clocks back in, or pull the bulb holders, holders out a little way and grab hold of the bulb with something like a pair of pliers so you can pull off the top without the thing falling into the body. Okay, now I believe that I've developed a way to test whether your um, LEDs are in the right way round or not before you put the thing in the car. I've made myself a little amateur tester, just a battery with a positive and negative wire on the end. And I think I've worked out that this tab here, third from the bottom on the left, is the negative side for pretty much all of the lamps. So when testing, you'd always connect the black negative terminal of your battery onto this tab. And as far as I can make out, there's quite a few different positives for the different circuits. This one just above the negative, I think there's also one just below the negative, and the main one, as far as I can tell, is right at the top here, top left. I've tested this a bit, a few lights have come on, a few haven't, so I'm going to turn around the ones that haven't, see if I can get them to all come on at the same time. So after putting all the LEDs in the right orientations and testing them with a the battery, I still couldn't get the whole circuit to work. Um, one thing I've noticed is the positive side of the circuit has to flow through this regulator, uh, which I think is what it is. Uh, it flows in through this leg here and then out through this terminal here. I took the thing off and noticed there's a lot of corrosion 
underneath on this small circuit board. So I scraped it off with a screwdriver, scraped off this brush washer a bit and bent the legs out a bit, put it back in and now the whole thing seems to work. So if yours isn't working that might be something you need to try or have a look at. So just a quick recap then. This is the main negative for most of the lighting circuits, except some of the others which are quite obvious. As you can see, this bottom one is just a loop that goes around like that, and some of the others you can trace around as well. So to test these LEDs, it does work quite well by having a battery, putting the negative on there, and then the positive on the various positives around the circuit. This is the main positive for most of the um, illumination lights, and then some of the other lights for some of the other functions have different positives uh, around the uh, around the area as I showed earlier. One final thing to note before I put it back in the car is that along with the indicator light also the battery light has to be a regular bulb that's capable of flowing in both directions something to do with making the battery charge correctly. The rest of them cannot be replaced with LEDs but the indicator and battery should both be regular normal bulbs. Now that I've temporarily reattached the dash, um, I've just put the cable underneath and plugged it in there. We can see the charge lights on, handbrake lights on as you would expect. And if I switch on the side lights, you can just see a little red glow there and there, which shows the dash lights are now working. So that's one job successfully complete. I did have quite a lot of trouble um, getting it to work um, and I'll just to help any of you out there that might be experiencing similar issues I'll just go through some of the things I looked at. Um, these, this is the wire that feeds the dimmer switch which is behind the dash which as you can see I've linked out. The single grey wire is the input which comes from number two fuse on the fuse box and these two wires are the output. One feeds the dash lights and one feeds stuff like the clock and things. Um, I did a test on this um, wire and found out there was no power coming to it so there was a problem there. Um, that wire is fed from number two fuse in the fuse box which is this second from top one here. Um, I found I did have power at the fuse um, so when I investigated further, this plug underneath the fuse box was loose. And for some reason, the only connection it was connecting was the outfeed to the dash lights. No idea how that can happen, but that's what it was. Um, so I hope that's been of use to you. Um, I'm going to continue taking the dash apart in the next video. But until then, see you next time.